Kelly or Shelly, can you hear me? Oh, uh, kind of. Kind of. Kind of computer glitchy. Yeah. Pretty glitchy. Can you hear me better now? Ooh. I wonder if it's our connection. No. I can see you guys perfectly. And you I can, can hear you. Chris? I, I can see you and hear you. Okay. Can you see and hear me? The sound on, on your end is, is real glitchy. Okay, let me see if I can fix that. Okay. So something through your phone. Yeah, something with my phone. Can you see and hear me? Oh, so it's delayed. I wonder why that is. I'm going to turn my sound you, you down. Can't do that. It'll be such a delay. Will it? Yeah. Shelly, Indiana Backyard Gardener says that um, they can hear and see both of us. You might have to go out. And... All right. Let me see if I can go out and come back in and, and see if that fixes it. Okay, and other people are saying that they can hear and see us both perfect. Can you hear on there? Oh, and she's gone. Okay, so Shelly's trying to come back in. We figured we should do this just a little bit before we were gonna actually officially start to make sure our both of our connections were okay. Oh, so Shelly can hear us on the computer, but not on the phone. So maybe when she comes back in, it will fix that. I'm on a computer, so um, I'm not doing it on my phone at all. And maybe they're going to have to listen on the computer and just video it on the phone. Um, okay, just a second. I think she's coming back. I'm on a computer, so. <laughs> so I have to switch it to your computer. Hey, Jason. It's still. That's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we still have sound problems. <laughs> We can. All right, we're going to try one more thing. Okay. So she's off again. She's trying another thing. <laughs> Technology is so much fun. Hi, Day. How are you? Hi, Riri. Also, Riri says that um, Shelly was fine, but I think it was delaying their sound. And then it was like making these popping noises. So they're gonna try one more thing and come back on. So lots of you are saying that you could hear both of us. So I'm not really sure. Maybe because they're, ha they're watching it both on the computer and on the phone, maybe that was part of the issue too. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. When Shelly starts to come back on, a little tiny box comes down in the bottom left corner of mine. And so I'm waiting for them to pop back in. Hey, Chad, how are you? This is going to be such a fun night because we get to share ideas with you. And then you guys can give us ideas and we can talk about it. Oh, here they come. They're coming back again. <laughs> Okay. Okay, can we can now. Or let me get you where I can see you. Oh, you excellent. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, everyone, can you hear both of us talk? Say that one more time, Shelly. I had a problem with my phone. I couldn't. 
microphone and now I'm on Doug's and it's working. Oh. So. Oh, well, good. Good, yeah. good, good. So a whole bunch of people are coming in. Hi, Craig. Hi, Mary. Chad's here. Jason's here. Victoria. Um, let's see. Indiana Backyard Gardener. Todd Rainey's here. Ray Ray. Or maybe it's Riri. I'm not sure about that. So I apologize if I said that wrong. Um, Dee's here. Madeline's here. So many people so far. No? Okay. Can you hear okay, Sandy? I can hear you guys fine. Yes. Oh, good. We're going to leave his. Is, is it, Go ahead. Is it delayed at all like it was just, before? Just a little bit delayed, but it's not bad. Okay, cool. Cool. Okay. So everybody that's watching, Shelly and I have kind of a list of some of the things we're going to talk about. She's going to throw some stuff in. I'm going to throw some stuff in. We're going to um, do some just from seed catalogs all the way into gardening. Mm -hmm. And both of us have, am I correct, right, Shelly, that you posted a video today on trying to get into Shed Wars? Yeah, this will be. Yeah, and I, of course. <laughs> and I did my first one. I've never been in Shed Wars before. And so we'll see if we get picked, drafted. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll see if we, um, you know, are on the same team. <laughs> I think it's going to be really fun no matter what. I think so too. Yeah. And, but everyone that's watching, if you have gardening questions, if you will put them over there and um, we'll try to catch all those gardening questions as we go. And um, we have a couple little banners going across that have both of our um, channels, Healthy Homestead Chick, that's Shelly's, and Suburban Homestead Wyoming is fine. <laughs> Shelly? Oh, and there's Doug there. Yeah. <laughs> and Doug is his way homestead. Where's Where's Joe? <laughs> Joe is downstairs watching World War II movies. I said, don't uh. come up. <laughs> Doug Wait. over here so he can see comments. And um, I can't on the phone, but he can over here so he can tell me to you if oh. somebody has been or something. Excellent. Hey, it looks like your not Nightbot is crazy. It's deleting oh. a lot, putting them in timeout, saying that they're using all caps, but they're not. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder yeah. if I can, if I can stop Nightbot. I am just going to block Nightbot for tonight. So, if we have trolls that come in, I'll we will it. have to catch them. Yeah, and Jason, and Jason, yeah. over at Homestead, Homestead in Northern Michigan, is good at catching trolls too. Yeah, he's <laughs> They're the troll patrol. <laughs> well, Steph's saying, oh, Sandy, you know, Joe will photobomb um, at some point. And that is probably true. <laughs> but Shelly, do you want to wait um, for the 10 minutes or do you want to just get started? It's up to you, whatever you want to do. So... <laughs> This is the first time that I've used StreamYards that I've had another person on, another channel on. So I'm like totally excited about that. I might have to change my glasses because these ones are reflecting too much. Okay. And, you know, I wear cheaters and so I have like 15 different pairs of glasses. <laughs> well, but this is my first time doing anything like this other than Doug making me do a live with him. So I've been nervous all day. <laughs> well, why don't we why don't we first start um, just talking about our two different channels, okay. um, and so that it gives everybody kind of a background of how, for them to feel comfortable that perhaps maybe we know what we're talking about when it comes to gardening. <laughs> <laughs> and and Shelly and I are in two different parts of the country, so. Right. It was much more warm, warmer weather, longer season than me. 
And I mean, we've had two big snowstorms already. <laughs> and yeah. then this morning when I got up, 19 degrees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so Shelly, do you want to start and just tell them about your channel? Sure, I'm Healthy Homestead Chick. And, you know, we have His Way Homestead, which is, is our homestead, everything kind of together. Uh, that's kind of more of Doug's thing that I just contribute to every now and then. And mine is more along my health journey. And I also include our animals and the garden and a lot of herbs. I, I really enjoy growing herbs and learning how to use herbs. And um, that's kind of a, a big part of my channel, which I haven't had my channel for very long. It, it's pretty new. Um, but as far as gardening goes, we started, we moved here to this home in 2006 and we had our first huge garden in 2007. And in our previous home, we had small gardens. We had a small yard and we had small gardens, but, um, this one was really big and I have expanded it to where I've had two and three garden plots on the property and I've shrunk it down to a large garden. And now we're doing raised beds and a large in-ground garden. So I would say really I've had major gardens for 13 years and um, learned a lot. And we do, we grow herbs, we grow our garden vegetables. We have blueberries, blackberries, grapes, muscadines. Um, is that all the fruit we have? We have peach trees, but we have learned that you have to spray them a lot. And so we haven't done that. So we haven't actually got peach tree, peaches off the trees yet, but um, maybe, maybe one of these days. So, um, that's that's kind of what we have here we also you know raise animals we have chickens ducks quail and rabbits rabbits and bees, and bees? yeah they're not yeah they don't qualify under animals <laughs> so we have meat meat animals that we you know we raise our own meat and then we have the bees that are new to us this year and hopefully we'll get our first honey in the spring Awesome. Yeah, we're excited about that. <laughs> yeah, it's so good when it's your own honey and you get to just take it right from that hive and it's just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I love I love walking outside and getting the ingredients and bringing them back in and cooking. I just can't imagine what it would be like to go out and have honey to bring inside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, Joe and I actually bought our house in 2006 also oh, because fun. we had come from South Dakota and we actually came for, for, for my job and we lived, I, they were transferring me to Casper, which is about in the middle of the state. And Joe couldn't find work there because he had always been a minor. Hmm. And so that first almost year i drove back and forth because he got a job in gillette because we're lots of mines and in the middle of the winter it's white knuckles and it was like i had enough of this <laughs> 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 and so um we rented first and then we bought our house in 2006 also so wow. it's it's a fun journey and i have gardened for probably 40 some years Wow. Yeah, small gardens, big gardens. I have a lot of gardens um, in our our yard because it's a big yard. Not as big as your guys's, but still big. So you started when you were four? Oh, yeah. You're so <laughs> <crazy>. <laughs> Actually, I helped my grandmothers and my, my dad in gardens the whole time I was growing up. So really, you know how it is that when you're helping your parents, you're gardening your whole life. Right. <laughs> And then I became a master garden when we came over to Wyoming. And this year and next year, I am the state master gardener president for Wyoming. Wow. And so that's been a fun journey. Yeah, I bet. But we also have um, bees. Um, we did have chickens and rabbits 
but because we're going to Arizona, I gave those away. Oh. And it's a, it's a hard trade off. Warm weather all winter or having animals. Weather. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I think it just should be great. And I, I see lots more people coming into the chat. Tony from Walsh Farms. Um, the Montes are here, so hi, Day. Um, Kevin from Lazy Pond Farms. Uh, Janie's here. Will it grow? Now, Will it grow is with John with Shed Wars. Hi. So that's exciting. Yeah. So we have to be impressive so they'll pick us on their team. <laughs> Right, so we can get in that draft and be on the same team. That's right. <laughs> I'm sure how it works. <laughs> but, um, you know, gardening is a journey. You're always learning tips and tricks from every single gardener. So with Shelly and I tonight, hopefully you will learn some things that you can take into your garden. And that's what we hope anyway. So the... I think we can, we're almost right at five o'clock. So I think we can probably start with our, um, our list. Okay. Okay. And the first thing I have on the list is seed catalogs. Right. And I've already started getting seed catalogs. How about you, Shelly? I haven't yet. I have not. Uh, I got the Baker seed catalog, the big one. Cause I always order that each year. Okay. And, I had heard for, through the grapevine that they had literally hired all kinds of more people to do their seed sales this year. And so as soon as I heard that they were starting to go out different parts of the country, I went online and ordered my seeds from them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that is my number one source. Mm -hmm. They are absolutely my favorite. And I, I didn't order the catalog but um, they're definitely who I go for, go to first. Yeah, that they have, I've always done my biggest order with them. And I got my catalog from Pine Tree so far. And that's a fun catalog because they have all kinds of other things besides seeds, soaps and books and herbs and teas. And so it's always really interesting. I have not heard of them. Yeah, it's not a large catalog. But they have a lot of information, and I appreciate that. Yeah, I'll have to look into that one. What was a place in Missouri that we stopped at? I couldn't remember the name of it. <laughs> yeah, but one of my feelings is I always like to order some seeds from all kinds of little catalogs because I don't want those companies to go out of business. Yeah. And so I have my main things I order from Baker Seeds, certain things I just love. And then when I start to get those catalogs, I try to order one or two from those different catalogs, especially if they're a small company. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And one that I just got seeds from this week, and I'll try to show it. I brought it in here. Let's see. This is Strictly Medicinal. Oh, nice. Yeah, Strictly Medicinal. It's organic, GMO-free, and open-pollinated. Everything is. And um, it's not a huge book, but they have a lot of stuff in it with really good descriptions. Oh, that's helpful. I ordered uh, a chamomile seed packet. It had four different types of chamomile that you plant in different stages. Mm -hmm. Like the first one, the German chamomile, I planted this week. Oh, nice. The others all start in the spring. But... Um, I ordered from them earlier and, and I really like them. They just have a really, really nice variety of seeds. And this, this is the, um, let's see, can you see that? That's uh -huh. the packet. That's the German. And whenever we talk about how we we kind of label and find things in our garden, I'll explain the writing on this as well. Let's see, I was trying to make a list. Um, ML Gardner, have you heard of them? Yeah. Okay, I ordered from them last year. Yeah, they have a lot of videos on YouTube. Do they? Yeah. Um, that might be where I heard of them, <laughs> where I found 
but I did order from them last year and, and the seeds were really good. But I'm like you, I like if it's a small company and they have good heirloom non-GMO seeds, I really would rather support them. And when Doug and I were traveling two years ago, three years ago, we found a little um, seed place on the side of the road. It was off the interstate, but we saw a sign and Ooh. stopped there and it was a great little shop. And I tried to find the name before I came on and I couldn't find it, but it was really neat. That is fun. Um, I get this magazine and it's called Backwoods Home. Home. Yeah. <laughs> and Jackie Clay is one of the contributors and she answers questions, but her and her husband actually have a little seed company. Uh, and because they live in Minnesota, that's a perfect place for me to order because things that will grow in Minnesota will grow in Wyoming. Right. And so I, you know, I buy from them because I want to support them. because I want them to continue doing, um, having seeds because I think it's important. I don't want these great big, huge companies gobbling up and you're losing all kinds of different heirlooms. I agree. I agree. And I also shop at our local co-op every year. Mm hmm um, that way there are seeds that we know that will grow in this area. Um, they're not always top quality, I would say. It's more volume, but I do want the ability to grow, to buy locally if I have to. Right. And that's, like I said, that's always in bulk, larger larger things like corn. If we want a, a lot of corn or a lot of okra that I know will grow here, I'll mm -hmm. go there. But um, I like supporting our local co-op as well. Um, where you guys are, do you have seed exchanges where people have saved seeds and then they come together on a day and you get to trade little packets of seeds? Not that I'm aware of. There might be some out there, but not that I'm aware of. I would definitely participate in that. Yeah, a lot of times master gardeners will have seed exchanges and because like our local one does that. And then over in Rapid, Rapid City, South Dakota, where we're from, they have one at the library and the public is invited and they can just come, even if they don't have seeds to exchange, they can pick up seeds for free. Yeah. And then we have a seed library in town that okay. the master gardeners oversee. Yeah. And you, you can take as many seeds as you want. I mean, they we would like you to bring some seeds back, right. <laughs> but lots of people don't because they, do they don't understand the idea of saving seeds. Right. But it's a great way to get free seeds and to try things and see if it works in our area. Yeah, that's great. So. Yeah, and I see that there's a whole bunch of new people. Farmstead Smith is in here, Tin, Tin Can Gardener. Um, Indiana Backyard Gardeners here. Glamma Tips. That's a fun name, isn't it? Just Surviving is in. So thanks everybody for joining me and Shelly. That's so exciting. <laughs> now, um, by, the, the, by the time it's springtime, really by the time it's January, I'll probably have 20 or 30 different catalogs. How about you? Yeah, at least. And I get all excited and I get all, oh, I'm going to try something new this year and, you know, mark everything up. And then I go back whenever it's actually time. And I'm like, I don't need to do this. and I don't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the nice thing about catalogs, you get to learn so many things about those seeds. And that's what I really appreciate yeah. about, um, well, especially like Baker Seeds. And they'll feature and have like two or three pages on that whole history Right. of that plant and those seeds and that's interesting yeah it really is and doug said he thinks that's where we actually went was oh fun mansfield missouri uh-huh um, yeah i think that is they, they have a little village there right oh, right was yeah so we were there we actually went there i guess it's been it's been several years ago Six, well it was when josh was up there okay so yeah it's been a while but we just four or five years. happened to see it and stopped in at the time. I I didn't know who they were. I wasn't ordering from them. But yeah, I didn't realize that's who it was. I thought it was something else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, the next thing that we have on a list is what is your budget for gardening? Hmm. You know, it's something that gardeners have to think about, you know, <laughs> you know because pack of seeds add up. It does. It does. Um, I don't, I don't sit down and do a structured budget for gardening, but I've also, I've been doing it for a while and I have seeds that, that I save. Uh, I spent more money last year than I have in a long time, but all of this was just starting with the shutdowns and mm -hmm. grocery store shortages and all that seed shortages. And so I went in and ordered a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have ordinarily ordered or a quantity that I wouldn't have normally. Yeah. Um, Janie's asking, how do you recommend somebody find out if they do have um, seed exchanges in your area? For me, the easiest way is just type in when you're Googling, just type in seed exchange and put either your area or the town you live in. And a lot of times that information will pop up. And if you don't find anything, then just wait, you know, another month and try it again. Because the closer we get to where it's time to start doing your starts inside, you will find more of those ex um, exchanges. And you could probably contact your ma your local master gardeners mm -hmm. associate. Yeah, or an extension office. If mm -hmm. you don't have master gardeners in your area, just call the extension office and a lot of times they know. Yeah. And some seed exchanges, um, libraries are actually in a library. And so you might check with your local library. That's a good idea. And for, for me, my mom has for the last few years sent me a, like a gift certificate so I can buy seeds. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a great idea. It is. And my daughters this year for my birthday gave me Baker Seed gift cards. No. And so then I can spend more than I would. Right. <laughs> your question she doesn't really have a limit but, oh Ellie, you were lucky her gardening budget is nothing like my my uh uh hobby budgets yeah so my my toys are a lot more expensive <laughs> well and i'm pretty frugal anyway <laughs> <laughs> so that helps but i um he's been asking me what i want for christmas and all that and actually i'm I'm going to the, the Strictly Medicinal and mm -hmm. they have um, some root packages um, like ginger and horseradish and things like that, that I don't have, that I would love to have turmeric. Um, oh, and so I'm going to help him buy that for me for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we really don't need much for Christmas <laughs> and you know, it's, that that stage in life where we have what we need, you know, right. it's, it's things that I would just really like to add to the garden. And I would appreciate that as Christmas presents. <laughs> right. And that once you plant horseradish, you can always have horseradish, you know, and, and I've grown turmeric, but here, unless I bring it inside, it's too cold. Um, yeah. I can start it early and then I can take it outside, but then I got to bring it back in. But where you live. Right. Now we're in zone seven. I, I meant to say that in the introduction, in the introduction, but yeah, we're in zone seven and we never know what our weather is going to be. <laughs> Yesterday it was 74 and by this weekend it's going to be low in the thirties. Wow. So it's just, it's up and down. I actually picked my i had green tomatoes that were this big and um jalapenos and different peppers and things like that that i picked yesterday all my summer garden things i went ahead and cleared out yesterday because mm -hmm. we're getting cold weather now so we never know if it's going to be cold or hot and it changes from day to day so our fall and um early spring gardens they're just kind of you you don't don't know if they're going to survive or not mm -hmm. it could be hot until christmas 
or it could freeze until Christmas. So it's just kind of a guessing game. Yeah, and we're in 4B, which is a lot colder than you. But we, lately we have had lots of fluctuations. Well, like this week, I think the highs are basically 30s and 40s, where, um, you know, a week, eight days ago, we were all the way up in the 60s. Wow. And, but with those two big snowstorms that we had, you know, the garden was basically right. done for, you know. And then it got one night, it was minus four. And even the stuff in the greenhouse, it was too cold for. Yeah. And we have had one hard freeze already. And it was right after I put in, I had broccoli plants and cauliflower and cabbage plants that my neighbors bought for me. And we had a hard freeze and that really just stunted their growth. Now mm -hmm. they're coming back now, but um, normally we wouldn't have that problem at all. Uh-huh. Um, one thing I would say, you know, if, you know, if people that are on the the chat are on a budget because there's a lot of people that are strictly on a budget. You know, first I would go to the extension office or master gardeners because gardeners are giving people and you buy a packet of seeds. You are never going to use all those seeds in that season. And so a lot of times if you, or you just throw it out on Facebook, you know, uh, does anybody have any extra tomato seeds or carrot seeds or whatever? And you'll probably get some. But if you're really on a strict budget, look at the things that your family, vegetable-wise, eat the most of. You know, what can you really grow in your area? So if they really like carrots, you need carrot seeds. If they really like green beans or peas, that's something, because you never want to plant things that you're not going to use, unless you know, like your mom really loves those things. <laughs> you know, if you know somebody that really loves them. But when you're on a budget, that makes a difference on what you grow because you really have to say, okay, what can I grow in my garden space to make the most of that area? And if it's something, if you're having to choose between two, if one of them, one of them is cheaper to buy at the grocery store than the other one, grow mm -hmm. the more expensive thing at home and, right. and less expensive item at the store. Um, Early on, that's how I chose some of the things that we bought. If I could buy it for a dollar at the grocery store, mm -hmm. then I would buy that and grow the more expensive produce at home. I think that's totally true and a good way to look at it because um, it just adds up so fast. Because like when I put my order in, you know, and my mom's giving me $100 for seeds, it's it just is gone. <laughs> in just such a short time. A hundred dollars for seeds? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you have to decide, like, if you can't start those in your house earlier or in a greenhouse, um, don't buy those seeds. Just buy the starts at your local nursery. Right. Um, and some of the things that I look at when I buy at a local nursery, and the people just stare at me, but I literally take every um, plant out of their, their little container because what I was finding several years ago when I wanted to try a few things that I didn't have seeds, there were slugs in the bottom. And I don't really have slugs in my yard. And you don't want to <laughs> No. <laughs> and it also showed me um, if it was too root bound right. or if there was damages on the roots. And so I think you should not be afraid to just say hey um this is what i'm paying my money for this that we worked hard for i'm gonna check all parts of that and if you look under the leaves and there's any bugs or damage that's something you need to look for right i agree i bought i went to a new nursery last year and i don't oh it was stevia that i was looking for i couldn't find it mm -hmm. high, so we drove about 45 minutes and i found a stevia plant and paid more than I probably would have otherwise mm -hmm. and brought it home and it was completely root bound. <laughs> oh, wow. I was so frustrated for paying more money for it and then it was root bound. And I ended up splitting it and babying it and they, they ended up just going crazy. And um, it I've harvested all summer long from that plant. But if I had 
done what you did, I would have known better and I wouldn't have bought that one. I wouldn't have had to put in the extra work of making sure that it survived. Right. Because sometimes it, it can, sometimes you can make it survive, but right. other times it's just, you know, it's spiraled, spiraled around. And a lot of times if you buy flowers, like I always um, like pansies to add in pots mm -hmm. oh, and almost always pansies are just like root bound. <laughs> when you buy it because they're flowering and they've been in that pot too long. Right. So I just take a knife and I just slice every four sides and I break those roots off and it just stimulates them. And sometimes that will help or taking the scissors and dragging some of that curled roots off and just cutting it off. Yeah. And that's a good tip for people that are new to plants too, is that you, you don't want that and, and you can cut those mm -hmm. and they will survive. They will thrive that way. Yeah. And because you're, you're spending, you know, for a four pack sometimes as much as a package of seeds. Right. Right. And so you just have to be careful with, you know, and if the nursery gets upset with you, it's just like too bad. It's my money. <laughs> <That's nurseries. laughs> and you know, but, on, the, on the budget, don't buy everything in the book. No, you really need you, whenever you're starting out, you don't want one type of every seed that you find. And um, I get a lot of seeds from from people around here that are new to gardening. And that's exactly what they do. They buy 25 varieties of tomatoes and then they learn that they can't do that. They can't plant them all. And I have people messaging me, hey, do you want to try these seeds? And I will get 25 varieties of new tomatoes that I've never tried before. And um, normally they're always good seeds. You know, they're the higher end um, heirloom seeds. And so I've tried all kinds of things because of new gardeners that have just gone overboard. I would say get a couple of things to start with, figure out what you're doing and add on each year or even different parts of the season if you have a long enough growing season. Right, right. And I wanted to say hi to um, Arkansas Woodcutter. He says, stick to 15 varieties of tomatoes. <laughs> yes, if you want to. <laughs> uh, I have kind of an obsession with tomatoes. And usually I grow about 40 different types. Sometimes it's been up to 60 different types of tomatoes. I <laughs> I have this obsession. <laughs> it's different than whenever you've done it before and you know, you understand what you're doing. Whenever yeah. you and you have your very first garden, you don't need those 25 varieties. <laughs> that's that's true. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say hi to Mulberry Branch Farm is in now too. So, and another thing is if you're Growing 15 varieties of tomatoes, what are you going to do with all those tomatoes? Right. You know, because, I mean, it is pounds and pounds of tomatoes from a plant. And it is. it's one thing to give your neighbors some tomatoes, but after a while, they don't want to talk to you. <laughs> you know, but like we make um, huge quantities of V8 juice. We make tomato sauce. We make salsas. We make um, juices, paste. Um, spaghetti sauce, just all kinds of stuff with our tomatoes. And so we use those tomatoes. Right. But if you're growing 50 plants and you're, what are you going to do with it all? Yeah. You know, and, and, and it takes a lot of space. It does. Gene Fogle asked if you grow asparagus. Oh. I grow asparagus in um, um, 4B. Do you guys grow asparagus? I, I grow asparagus. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. And a fun thing about asparagus, because people will say, well, can I grow it in a pot? Well, the roots go down 12 feet. I'm not sure you can grow it in a pot. I mean, you can start it in a pot. <laughs> well, I have it in my flower beds in the front of the house, uh -huh. in, the, in the beds. And we don't spend a lot of time out there. And notoriously, I don't find it until it's, where's the camera? Uh -huh up here and it's ferny and it makes a beautiful plant. 
But you know, you're not supposed to pick it for the first two or three years so that they become stronger. So mine are really strong at this point. <laughs> well, you know, harvest it. Yeah. <laughs> they used to always tell you that, that you shouldn't do pick it for two to three years. But then there was a lot of studies done in Europe. And as long as it's as big as a pencil, you can you can pick it but you only want to pick it for a certain amount of time and then you want it to send shoots up to fern because that's where it gets all of its energy from and it can set more seeds and things like that Mine but, I have... <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's it's interesting that um you know you learn one thing you know you're going you do classes or you do webinars or you watch videos on YouTube and you learn something. And then a few years later, they do all these studies and they say, well, that's true in some ways, but other ways it's not. Yeah. Because like they always tell you, you should always rotate your crops. Right. You know, right. that has been something I had learned since I was so young. Right. Um, but there's been, that's some, right. <laughs> there's been some studies over the last 10 years that they've been um, doing brassicas, which would be your cabbages, your broccolis, your kale, anything like that. And they found that they kept them in the same spot for five years. And the first year, and they did all the weights and everything. The third year was the biggest producing. And by the fifth year, it was back to what they got for poundage in the first year. Wow. And then they, they would just top dress the soil. They didn't till it. They would just do about a two inch layer of compost. And unless it, unless it got some kind of disease, then they would move it. But otherwise, they've done two sessions over the 10 years, and it was both the same results. Wow. I did not know that. So my cabbages, I leave um, in the same spot for five years. I would like to know how that works with squash. Do you have squash bugs? Um, once in a while, we have squash bugs. You know, with the advantage of the north, though we have a shorter season, we have a lot less bugs than other places. Right. And so once in a while, there'll be a season and they just come in. I, I figure they come in in plants that got shipped, right. you know, and your neighbor growing squash because they don't do it from see, seeds. And those little guys come and visit you, too. <laughs> this, this is the first year that I can remember. And we did have squash bugs, but they were really late in the season and they were only there for about a week. This is the first year that I haven't lost my entire crop to squash bugs. Wow. The only good thing about 2020 so far. <laughs> <laughs> Even the squash bugs didn't survive it. <laughs> when squash bugs burrow into the vine, you know, where because that that's what's killing your, your squash. People inject milk in there. Really? Well, we have squash bugs, which grow on the, they live on the leaves and then we have squash vine borers oh, okay. into the vine so we're fighting both of those but i didn't i didn't know that about milk yeah because milk is a really strange thing because like powdery mildew you uh -huh. can put milk on the leaves and it will help it it's a weird thing and you can use powdered milk you know you can mix it, the powdered milk up and spray it on there hmm. it's just something that milk has in there that helps it Wow. Because pottery mildew, depending on what type it is, can live in the soil for like five years. Right. I did know that. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's interesting. Um, and Indiana Backyard Gardener says that um, this is the first year having tomato hornworms. Every once in a while we find one of those, but it's rare. Do oh, you guys have those? Oh, yes. <laughs> That must be more warmer weather. Yeah. Uh, you, you will have beautiful tomato plants here. And the next day you will go out and you will have stems. And they, they show up overnight and they don't come just as one tomato worm. Wow. They're, they're everywhere. But they're wonderful to feed to chickens. <laughs> I would. Yeah, because any caterpillar chickens like. Right. <laughs> my tomatoes so my chickens get to eat them and it kind of makes you feel better <laughs> yeah um so let me put this one up i wonder if de 
would work on any of that. Diatomaceous earth is really a good product. Right. Um, it's all natural. Uh, I sprinkle it on a lot of things when I think I'm going to have a problem. Um, but if you water, you, you have to put it on again, mm -hmm. you know. But um, I always get the food grade because there are two different kinds. Right. And so we just have this big 50 pound bag that we've had for several years and I just use it when I need it. And Joe has this little thing that has a, oh, like a tip that comes out and it's, um, it's squishy like an accordion. And so you put it inside there and then you just do that and it just puffs it on to the leaf. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where he got that from, but I thought it was really interesting and I like it. <laughs> now we have never found anything that, that kills squash bugs other than going out and hand picking them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's earth doesn't work. Neem oil doesn't work. Nothing that I know of works. Uh, you can go out and uh, people spray like Dawn dish detergent on their leaves. Mm -hmm. But I've, unless you go out and do that almost every day, I just haven't found anything that works for the squash bugs. Yeah, um, I've just picked them when I found them, you know, and but we haven't really ever had such a problem with them. But I could see how they could decimate plants very quickly. Absolutely. Tell you later had a question. Um, she says, what kind of tell you later says, what kind of plants, fruits do you grow in indoors, if any, and which ones are best for indoor growing? Shelly, do you grow anything? plants or fruits indoors? I really don't. Um, my son bought some leeks at the grocery store and cooked with the top. So we have them stuck in a glass of water on the windowsill <laughs> and they grow back out. But as far as really growing plants inside, I, I don't. Everything is, is in the raised beds or in the garden. Um, we grow um, citrus here. And to Joe's chagrin, because <laughs> I make him move them out. I make him move them in. <laughs> but I have a big fig right now that I'm growing. Let me see if I can make the camera look. get it. See the fig that I'm growing? Oh, I'm jealous. And I, I had a fig several years ago that I, um, sorry, um, had in the greenhouses for about three years. But then one winter it was too cold. And even though it was covered in the wintertime, it just didn't survive. But I, I have a hydroponics inside also. It's a I harvest and it has about 30 just little cell things. It's, it goes along the wall. Real tall ones? Yeah, real tall. Okay. And I grow salads and tomatoes and peppers and Swiss chard. And so it really extends our season. Yeah. And I can literally grow all year round, which for me, the reason that I got it was because it was just craziness this year. And I just thought I need to be able to grow in the winter time. Yeah. And there's a lot of different hydroponic systems that people use. And I think they're fabulous. And, but we've grown lemons and limes and um, grapefruits and eventually they get too big and I have to give them to somebody that has tall ceilings. And <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm jealous of the fig. I've planted probably 10 fig trees and I cannot get them to grow here. Do you start with a stick or a, with seeds? No, it'll be a it'll be a plant. It'll be a stick. oh, a natural plant. Yeah. Um, like, like that one that's over there um, in the mail. It was just a stick. It didn't have roots or anything. And so then you buried it in the soil. But it's only um, it was from last summer. So it's well, it's growing big. Really so. Well, yeah. They they grow everywhere here, and people have huge, oh. fish, but. It's something about our clay soil and we've, we've dug huge holes. We've amended the soil and I just can't get one to grow. So I finally just gave up. And what type of um, figs are you trying to grow? I don't even remember. Like I said, I've, I've tried 10 different varieties out there and they just always die. So <laughs> I give up. <laughs> uh, in Indiana Backyard Gardener says that they want a fig and they're in 5B. In 5B, you can grow a Chicago hardy fig outdoors. And that, that's what this is, a Chicago hardy fig. 
Hmm. And so in the summertime, it goes outside. In wintertime, it comes back inside. But I'm in 4B, but in 5B, you can plant it in the ground. Hmm. So you might try a Chicago, though, just because was your fluctuation of weird weather sometimes you have, um, yeah. it could withstand it. But yeah. and maybe yeah. sometimes you just need that microclimate in your yard. You know, you have to find that sheltered place and then it's okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. There because, are a lot of trees around here. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of people with fig trees. We just can't get them to grow. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe ask them if there's a certain mulch they're using or if there's a certain fertilizer they're using that maybe that's the trick of it. Yeah, it could be. Oh, and Angie Todd is in here now. And Angie is my oldest daughter. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot. Yeah, she won something from. She did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so um, it's always interesting. Like, Tin Can Gardener's in. He's in a 10A. I think he's in Florida, if I'm rem remembering right. And he grows those star fruits. I would love oh. to grow a star fruit. So <laughs> it's just amazing. My, so many things. My parents just bought a house down at the Gulf Coast and they have filled up their whole acre and a half with different types of citrus, avocado trees, citrus trees, ah. everything. I'm just so jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> Yeah, there is another YouTube channel that I watch that's called Lead Farmer 73, I think. And he's from Florida. And he shows a really great videos on grafting or starting um, citrus oh. from just like from a branch. Right. And, um, it, he has about like 110,000 subscribers. Wow. But when I started watching him last January, he only had 35,000 subscribers. That is a huge jump. That is. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. But he's really knowledgeable about a lot of gardening things. So I appreciate watching him. Yeah. Yeah. And you learn constantly, whether oh. it's by plants, weather changes, people around you. You're always going to learn. Always. Yeah. yeah. Because um, a lot of it is just trial and error, too that you've tried growing this here and you moved over here and it worked. Right. Um, sometimes just in your yard, your soils are a little bit different and it can make a difference. One's a microclimate, one isn't in a microclimate. And right. if by just watching YouTube videos and Zoom things and w however you learn from or buying books, um, you glean little things from people. Right. And that was one of the reasons I wanted to get on shed wars because i watched them you know last summer and there was a lot of good tips and tricks and i thought oh i might try that <laughs> oh i'm hoping to learn this year <laughs> <laughs> and one thing if you are not subscribed to shelly's channel please check out healthy homestead chick and subscribe to her and grow her channel because she has a new channel. I mean, she's helped Doug on his, but because um, wasn't it this summer that you started? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not even sure when, but it was, it was well after his way started. Yeah. I started, my son wanted to do the channel with me and he, we wanted to work out together and do all that. And um, then he quit after about two videos. And so I, I switched it over. <laughs> own direction then he moved off and got married <laughs> <laughs> well i like how <laughs> how you're using um you know your garden and how you're bringing it in and cooking or canning or whatever and showing those healthy habits right to to help people that are watching i, I appreciate that and anybody can do 50 squats each day um i'm totally in awe <laughs> At 70 today, it was leg day, <laughs> and I got 70 on my calendar for today. <laughs> I'm but, impressed. <laughs> but I could hardly move after that. I, I came and sat down on the couch by Doug, and I'm like, I want to get up, but I just can't. 
That is so funny. Okay, so um, let's talk about how we preserve our vegetables because we've got the garden, it's right. growing. What are we going to do with it then? Whew. Well, I was going to say earlier, Ed and Ernie Hatmaker came over and visited us a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I saw that video. We, yeah. we were talking about how at the beginning of the, the season, we label everything and everything is just all perfect. And by mid season, it's kind of iffy. And by the end, you're just throwing things out there and you don't know what you planted. And I told her, I said, you get exhausted because you, you spent all this time prepping, prepping your ground, getting your seeds, planting everything. Then you start planting, you start weeding. And then all of a sudden you have produce and you think, oh, yay, I've arrived. Well, you haven't. That's when the work starts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> because you still have to keep weeding and taking care of your plants. But now you have the produce on top of it. And it's not going to last long because it's fresh. And um, you and I do a lot of the same things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and I learned some from you because you got your steam juicer right before I did. But um, I, I pressure can a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I can our, um, you know, green beans, tomato sauce and things like that. There's some things that I dehydrate. Mm -hmm. There's some things that we freeze dry. We freeze dry a lot. Mm -hmm. um, tomato products don't work well in the freeze dryer. Oh, uh, it's because um, of the sugar content, and you never mm -hmm. know exactly how much sugar content is going to be in there. Mm -hmm. but some tomatoes do really well, and some don't. And so I've decided that I would rather just can those and not waste the time and energy on something that might not work out well. Oh, that's a good idea. And that's a trial and error, it, though. Uh, it is. And so if you guys are thinking about getting a dehydrator, Shelly and Doug have a lot of videos on dehydrating, or not dehydrating, freeze drying um, things. And it's really interesting because that's a big investment. It is. Yeah. It is. It's a big investment. And we're doing um, freeze dry Fridays, which um, I missed this last Friday. <laughs> But the next one is going to be coffee. We oh. freeze dried coffee. Yeah, it's a little bit different than instant coffee. But um, the the freeze dryer it is an investment, but you have really long term storage. Right, like twenty five years. Right, twenty five years, and um, you maintain a lot of the the quality of the food. Where in canning, you know, it'll last for years, but you begin losing the nutrients and and vitamins and things out of the food. Uh, you don't have that with the freeze drying. Right, right. And another thing when we're looking at gardening, say you had a bumper crop of zucchini. So you froze and you canned and you froze, you know, freeze dried, dehydrated. Probably next year, unless you want a few just to, you know, grill or bake, don't plant so many zucchinis. If you have a huge shelf full of tomato sauces and everything, you don't really need to grow that many tomatoes next year because then it just sits on your shelf and it just gets pushed back farther and pushed back farther. So you have to really think, okay, this is what I did last year and it was so successful, but do I need that many plants this year? Right. So it's always a continuous thing. And so like I have a notebook and, um, I cut the little pictures out of the catalog and the description and I put that in there. I, if I started inside, I put that date when I planted it in the garden, I put that date. I'll say, Oh, it was a cold, wet summer. Um, it grew good or it didn't grow good. And I got that from my grandmother that she lived on a little farm and her stuff was down in the root cellar. Mm -hmm. And on one shelf, she had these little baby food jars, and it would have the seeds that she saved and it would say hot, dry summer, cool, wet summer. And so if the farmer's almanac said that they were predicting it was going to be a hot, dry summer, those are the seeds she picked. Wow. And so that is great. Me and my brother have always just done that. But the nice thing about clipping that out, you don't have to worry about, oh, what catalog was that in? Um, right. And it just you can just turn to it and okay, this is 
these are my tomatoes I'm growing this year. This is the information about them. And then at the end of the season, I can say, okay, this really liked my season. This right. did not grow well in Wyoming. Yeah. And it does take work, but if you're just adding it every day, it's not really so bad, you know, where sometimes you, like you were saying, you're putting things in and then it's like, I'm not really sure what type that was. Right. And what if you just loved it? And I mean, you, there's a lot of us that save seeds, but there's a lot of people that don't save seeds. Right. And then it's like, oh, it was really good, but I don't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, though. I was I was going to show how I how I diagram my garden. And yeah. Yeah. but to add your information to it. <laughs> now, I did a video on this. I I think it was on his way a long time ago. But this is what I just, I draw out like my raised beds. Uh -huh. and I, did, I don't have all on here, of course. And I write the number. Oh, yeah. Like number, number one. And then I go down here and I tell what number one. So if, oh, I planted, wow. if I planted three Cherokee purples, I would come down here and label what it was. Yeah, and, see, that's a great idea. Yeah, and maybe it's something that that you're not planting an individual seed. You're scattering like lettuce or radishes, something that's really mm -hmm. small. A fly. I would just divide the area and write. I can't. I can't point and do this at the same time because it's backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so number four would be like radish. So I would know it's in that half of the raised bed. Right. But um, I do on on mine. I get more specific, and I do say Cherokee purple, and usually what what seed company I get that from. But that's how I lay out my entire garden. If I have these are the raised beds, I do my in ground garden like this. Mm -hmm. if I have pots out there. I I spray paint the outside of the pots, and I I put the number of the pot on here and what I have at that. So these are these are my records of where I started. And again, I tend to get overwhelmed towards the end of the season. <laughs> and so I don't do as well. If, if something dies and I go stick something in its place, I don't do as well keeping up with that, but I need to do better. And I like your idea of putting the picture and, and all the information. So that's, that's a great, great idea. Yeah, and it's easy. And if you, if you don't have the catalog and you're just ordering it online, you can... Um, copy and paste that picture and that information and just print it off too. Yeah, that's great. You know, and so it's not like you have to have the catalog because a lot of people just order online. Right. But like, this is what I did for, I don't know if you can see it, this is one of my raised beds. Okay. And then I, on my other sheet, it does say exactly what kind of peppers, what kind of tomatoes, and then like the carrots go in a row, and so it's rows, onions are right. squares, it, it's just different tricks to, to do it. And then like, where you know what you're doing. Right. If and then, the bug would do it, it would be a scientific spreadsheet mm -hmm. with everything detailed out on it. <laughs> but I was just thinking it needs to be a spreadsheet. Yeah. He's got an engineering brain and I don't, I don't, I don't think that way. So what works for him is not going to work for me, but right works for you and you can go back at the end of the season and say yes this tomato worked really well or right. really don't like this one let's scratch that one off and you do have a list of what you like what grows well and you you can make a better educated decision right and so like i garden in my yard and then i garden over at the community garden so I've, at the community garden i know my space is this this many feet by this many feet and so i use gridded paper it's like graph paper only it's a little right like, some people call it graph paper some call it gridded but like this is my one from last year okay and so it just divides everything up and i have little notes and right. then i had it in my notebook too but when I went to plant, it was just so easy to do. And I didn't waste any time going, you know, because sometimes we go to our garden and we have this all these packets of seeds. 
but we really don't know where we're going to plant them. Right. <laughs> and sometimes we don't have enough seeds. Sometimes we have too many seeds. And for me, if I can just have it visual, mm -hmm. it makes it easier for me. Right. You know, and then I can save those. I just fold them up and put them in my notebook and I can go, okay, if I want to rotate, then I can rotate. I know exactly where they were because once you clear your garden out, it's like, hmm, was that really right there? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say. It makes it a lot easier to rotate or not rotate if you, if you want to try the new logic and, and see if that works. Right. Right. And then when you're planning out your garden, um, a lot of times it's hard to visualize how much can I put in a 10 foot space? Mm -hmm. You know, how do I need one packet of seeds? Do right. I need two packets of seeds? How many pounds will I get from those? And so like in a 10 foot row, because I always find it, if you take 10 foot sections, it's just so easy to figure things out. Because if your row is 20 feet, you just know that you have to double that. Right. <laughs> uh, like you can get two dozen ears of corn in a 10 foot row. So if it's just you and your husband or just yourself, how many ears of corn do you really need? Are you just going to eat it fresh? It depends if it's me. A lot. Or a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but like you can get five pounds of, cube, um, of lettuce in a 10 foot row. Five wow. pounds of lettuce is a lot of lettuce. Lettuce. You know, so maybe you only need one packet, you know, and do you have to grow the whole roll um, at once? I wouldn't because that's too much lettuce at one time. And that's another thing that people need to learn too, is that you can stagger plant. You don't have to plant the whole row that day. Um, like with our corn this year, we planted one section and we waited two weeks and then we planted another section. Mm -hmm. And that's something I need to do better at with other things as well. But I've done that this fall with radishes. You don't have to fill up the whole bed today. Right. Yeah. You're not going to eat the whole five pounds of, of lettuce at one time. But yeah. you it, know, you'd have to give them to your chickens. Exactly. <laughs> and it's so sad when you have this beautiful butter crunch lettuce. It's just too much. I'm so um, that is one thing that I'm really, really working on. And it is just stagger planning. And again, put it in your notebook. I planted this date. So mm -hmm. I have a calendar that we keep with the animals and breeding and things like that. So two weeks from now, I um, put in there, okay, I'm going to plant more radish or plant more lettuce or, or whatever that I'm stagger planting. Right. And that works, that continuous planting works for so that you can start earlier and go all the way later because if you start planting it again in july you will have way into the fall where otherwise it just you know it can only last so long when it's a vegetable yeah exactly and like i always like to grow carrots and radishes together mm -hmm. because the radishes come up so fast and it shades it because carrots take a long time so do parsnips take a long time and so <laughs> they're shaded and it makes it easier but another trick I do with carrots is if I'm just growing them by themselves or just in rows, um, I put aluminum foil down over top of them and put some rocks. Mm -hmm. And it's something with the heat reflection that it stays warmer but moist and mm -hmm. they germinate faster. Like their own little, little blanket. Yeah. Yeah. Like a solar blanket. Yeah. I don't grow a lot of carrots. I, I threw some out um, this year. <laughs> and they didn't grow, but right now I have some growing in the mulch in between my raised beds. That's awesome. Mulch, the mulch is only this thick, and I have beautiful greens. And I told Doug, I might not get carrots, but we can eat the greens, or the chickens will eat the greens. <laughs> yeah. Do you know that you can dry the carrot greens and grind it into flour? I did not know that. It's a trick. Mm. <laughs> I love things like that. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, like in America, we eat just parts of plants. Right. But like through Asia, like on a radish, they eat the radish. They and eat all the tops. They right. eat um, the little seed pods, which right. are fabulous. 
Huh. And because like the seed pods, you know how sometimes people can't eat radishes because it kind of upsets their stomach. Right. But most people, even if they can't eat the main radish, they can eat the seed pods. I did not know that. Well, no, look at greens. Steph, oh. thanks so much. <laughs> it's the sweetest ever. <laughs> a farmer at heart. <laughs> She's a farmer at heart. That is awesome. <laughs> Thanks so much, Steph. I'll tell you that for a long time, I was not a farmer. I wouldn't have gotten my hands dirty. I wouldn't have gotten my nails dirty. And I don't know what happened, but something clicked. and I ruined her. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even work in the garden. <laughs> His hands dirty. <laughs> But that is so I, funny. But I was telling somebody today that that's my happy place. I love being in the garden. I love being in the sunshine, hands in the dirt. It's oh, just, wow. I just love it. Yeah. I tell Joe that it's cheaper than therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just really like, you know, the whole world gets closed off when you're out in that garden and I don't mind weeding. Um, you get to see what your plants are doing. And I just, I just find it just so peaceful. I agree. And the time just flies by and it's like, Oh, I got all this done. And you know, and you hear the bird bud and it's just, it's just relaxing. I love it. Yeah. But I, I have found this year, that I have had more garden questions from people that have never had gardens before. And I think it's just because of the time that we're living in right now. Right. And we see that because, you know, see this summer seed catalogs were all sold out, you know, I mean, you could usually still get them in the stores, but um, I, I'm happy that people are really um, getting into gardening. I mean, it's healthy for you. It's good. It's great exercise. And, uh, you know, it's, it's sad that it takes a crisis to make people yeah. garden. Yeah. But I think once they do it for a year or two, they're just going to be hooked. Yeah. It'll be, they'll learn as they're <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you, when you know uh, exactly what went into your food, that is an empowering thing. It is. And, and it's, it's such a wonderful thing to, I, again, I love to walk outside and clip an herb and bring it in and put it in a pot. There's, there is just something wonderful about walking outside and getting your food and bringing it inside and eating it. Oh and yeah. It's yeah. wonderful. And, and it's a, you know, for a God thing too, to go to plant a seed and watch God create these plants and it's just to mm -hmm. me, there's no closer place to be to god than out in in the middle of the garden or oh, yeah even pick pick something and eat it in the garden like yeah. i'll eat raw okra i love raw okra he eats raw stuff out of the garden all the time <laughs> yeah uh it'll get to be supper time and i've been in the garden all day and i'll say to joe well i was foraging i'm not really hungry <laughs> 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 yep. <laughs> uh, Janie Fogel had a question about uh, root cellars and how do you store your root vegetables? Well, I don't have a root cellar myself, but I wish I did. But there are tricks that you can do. Like our garage is unheated. And so like when I'm saving my potatoes, I have these great big, huge, I don't know, they must be 55 gallon garbage cans. And I put a layer of straw and then I put a layer of potatoes, none of them touching. Layer of straw, then potatoes all the way up. And I can make it last. You know, I have a couple of those and a couple of those with carrots. And they'll last all winter. And for me, that works good. There's people that will dig holes in the ground and layer it with the straw or sand. And then they pile straw on top about two feet deep. And when they're they want to go out, they just push the snow in the straw and take their vegetables out. So there are tricks. Yeah, and we don't have root cellars here, of course, but like right now my sweet potatoes are in the garage. It's not, it's not temperature controlled, but I have it in one of those, the small greenhouses 
that you can buy like at Walgreens or something, mm -hmm. probably two feet wide, about five feet tall. And I have my sweet potatoes on all the shelves. And again, not to, oh. but there's a lot of air that can circulate through there so that um, they'll, they'll last all winter long there. Yeah. And I know that people will buy those little white styrofoam boxes mm -hmm. and put beets and carrots and um, things to store and have it in a basement in a cool corner or in an unheated garage or shed just to make them last longer. Right. And but uh, I'm sorry, Doug. Can you use sawdust uh, instead of straw? I think you could. Yeah, yeah. Um, you want the straw or the sawdust or the sand that you're using a little damp, but not too damp. And so I think there's there's options for people to use. I, I've seen videos that they had old freezers that didn't work anymore, and they dug holes in them and they made like a, a root cellar. All right. You know, some people are genius. <laughs> <laughs> but after digging post holes for our fence, we don't want to dig a hole that was the freezer. <laughs> that was but a big project. Our, our big problem here is that the water table is so high. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. It would just be a problem. Yeah. And and our humidity, we, we really have to watch any vegetables or anything like that in the garage. Mm -hmm. Just the humidity is, is awful. Yeah, and that's a, a thing to note wherever you live in the country, mm -hmm. that you need to check the vegetables that you're storing. Because once some of them start to go bad, it can really ruin yeah. a whole bunch of them or a whole bunch that are by there. Right, very quickly. You know, and so, but it is a, a way to keep vegetables and they're fresh. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's just interesting what you have to do depending on where you live. Right. You know, because I would love a root cellar, but Joe won't take it for me. <laughs> yeah. In Maryland, my grandparents had a root cellar. Uh, the, it, was, um, it was basically like a basement, but it had a dirt floor. A lot of the old, uh -huh. old the town that I was in, they had basements, but it was a dirt floor. And they had wooden shelves where they kept all their potatoes. And they would hang their hams that they cured themselves and uh -huh. like that. So. Yeah, and some of that is a lost art almost. And you have to really dig for the information to learn how to do that. Yeah. We have a section underneath our, our stairs because our house is kind of um, split. You know, you come in and you either go upstairs or you go downstairs. And so that area and it's concrete and it stays really cool in there. And I told Joe one day we should really try to make a root cellar in there because we could put it like a heavy steel door and have vent system so that the cold air comes in, the warmer air goes out. And so that might be something we might do in the future. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'd be a good video project. And then you can see how it mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, people learn to preserve, mm -hmm. you know, if they need to. Right. And, you know, like we have lots of, we have elk and deer and antelope and stuff here. And so we freeze and we can those things. And a friend of ours is an elk hunter. And so every year he shoots an elk for us and we get half the elk and I trade him vegetables and honey. Oh, that's awesome. So that's a good trade for us. So right. sometimes you have to look outside your little box on, right. you know, and then we have another friend that fishes and he knows that I want the fish guts. And so, I get fish guts to put in my garden <laughs> and I trade stuff. Those people aren't going to want that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good for your garden though. It is. It's amazing. That's one of the benefits of rabbits. I mean, right. The yeah. rabbit is amazing in the garden. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. And um, the tinker's wife is in here now. Hey. And So, so make sure that you um, click the um, the little thumbs up because we appreciate that. And YouTube likes it when we have that. And um, so, Shelly, what other um, things, you know, what, you know, like 
tools, budgets for tools. What it, what would your advice be to somebody that's starting a garden? You know, it's their first year or maybe their second year. What are the tools that they really need to have to have, you know, to be successful? Yeah, it, it's really going to depend on if it's an in-ground garden or if it's raised bed gardens. Mm -hmm. And um, around here, I highly recommend people starting out that they start with a, a small raised bed garden. Mm -hmm. Just because the soil where we are, it's clay. It's really hard to deal with. It's hard to amend and keep it, keep it fertile. Mm -hmm. And um, so I always tell everybody, start small. Mm -hmm. Just start small and grow. Um, for, for me, with our in-ground garden, we have a rear time tiller. And... Um, it's big enough to do the job, but it's small enough that I can handle it. Right. And um, you will learn what kind of hoe that you prefer. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I have one that, that's triangular. Mm -hmm. That is my favorite. And then I have one that kind of looks like a whole, What does it look like? It's, <laughs> it's like this. A stirrup hoe? Yeah, yeah. It'll... it'll Scoop underneath. Yeah, the, it's like a stirrup. Almost. Yeah, it'll scoop underneath the roots and and right. pull right out. And and I love that for for part of it. Um, you want gloves <laughs> because some things are thorny and you get bugs and you know things like that. But I don't I don't use a lot of stuff. I use the tiller in the once in the beginning of the season and once at the end of the season, I don't mm -hmm. want to over till my, my dirt at all. Right. If, if I could get away with no till, I would do that. But um, my garden is about 40 by 60. Mm -hmm. and, and it's, yeah. It just takes so much to amend it um, that I, I, I haven't got to the no till part yet, but I right. do believe no till is much healthier. Um, but really I use a hoe. That's, that's my main tool is a hoe and, and muscles. <laughs> it's some electrolytes. You're going to need them around here when it's 110 degrees and that's right. in the garden. <laughs> yeah. And that is a true statement. You need to be drinking you while do. you are working, you know, cause you are like literally sweating all the moisture you have out of your body. <laughs> You are. And, and it really is work. I mean, whenever you have an in-ground garden that you're having to, to hoe, even, even just making your rows, it mm -hmm. is exercise and, and you need to be in some type of physical condition where you can do that. Right. Right. Um, and, and an advantage of raised beds for someone that um, is maybe handicapped, mm -hmm. um, you can have some real tall ones that you can just like push a wheel, wheelchair right next to it. Right. Or maybe you just have to sit when you're gardening. There yes. are things you can do so that all you're doing is reaching in. Right. And that can be helpful. But I would agree with you. Probably my favorite tool is a diamond shaped hoe. Uh -huh. And I have a long handled one and a short handled one. Uh -huh. And um, that short handled one, I can just work around plants so easily and, I think you can really start, you know, tool wise, if you have a shovel, like a hand shovel mm -hmm. or, and a hoe, those are your two main things that you really need. Right. You know? Especially right. with raised beds, those two little things will just work that soil up. Right. Now, do you do raised beds as well? We do. I have like my community gardens all in ground. Mm -hmm. And then I have sections in the yard that are in ground and raised beds also. Because one day I told Joe that one of these days I'll be old and I, I need raised beds. <laughs> well, again, here we have the clay soil to deal with, but, you know, you can plan in it and you can you can work with it. But it, it's got to where here we want to plant by April 15th. Oh, wow. You're That's a month ahead of us. Yeah. yeah, but usually at the beginning of April, it starts raining and oh. it for a month. And because we have the clay soil 
and the high water table, you can't get out there until the middle of May because the ground is too wet. You can't work the ground. And you, for anybody that's new, you don't want to plant in wet soil. No, because your seeds can rot. Right. And it's yeah. just, it's going to be a mess. You, you just can't do it. And so the, the last couple of years, we haven't been planting until it's late. And by then here, it's 100 degrees outside and your plants haven't had time to acclimate to the weather and it's too hot and you're, you're fighting the whole season. Wow. So, Doug, we, we need raised beds. That way you, you have the, the you know, things off of it. Mm -hmm. I can go ahead and plant. And by the time these plants are going and healthy, maybe the garden will be dry and we can plant out there. And so it extends our season dramatically because of rain, not temperature, but because of rain here. Right, because that raised bed can just add so much drainage into there because a lot of times, you know, some raised beds are, you know, three feet tall. And so you can layer it with straw and leaves and sawdust and all kinds of stuff before you ever put the soil in there. Right. And it will biodegrade eventually and become soil. Now I have, how tall are ours, the tall ones? The tall ones are probably close to 18 inches. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. about 18 inches tall. And mine is kind of a hugel culture type. Oh, with logs. Right, we put logs in there and sticks mm -hmm. in there. And uh, that was our base, our, our bottom layer. And then we began filling up on top of that. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> Isn't Tim the sweetest ever? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you guys don't know Tim from Ridge Life, he is just a promoter of channels on YouTube. He's just great. Yeah. 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 He, he's, he's, <laughs> neighbor, he's pretty us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he had, how many rabbits did he get from you? Three. He got three rabbits, and now he has babies i yeah. saw the baby yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah that is you know um and it's interesting that if you guys didn't have youtube channels how would all of us meet you right. know right. our paths would have never crossed <laughs> right and we it makes that big world into a little world <laughs> it's really nice <laughs> it is nice Okay, um, Shelly, what else we should probably, and we're almost at an hour and a half, so what oh, well, other advice might you have? Again, I think you start small. Um, find what your family likes to eat and plant that first. Um, even now, after I've had years of experience with the garden, I, I will normally plant two or three new experimental things that I just want to play with, but... Um, but it's very limited. I, I stick with the things that we eat, the things that we like, the things that will store well, that will keep for a long time. I, I don't really go out of the box a lot. So start small, find out what your family likes, find out if you even enjoy gardening, you might not like it. So don't throw a lot of money into something that you're not sure about yet. Good advice. Yeah, the other thing I would advise people, if you're doing an in-ground garden, is to have a, a, a soil test. Yes, definitely. Because you don't know what kind of nutrients you do or don't have. And have that soil test every three or four years again, because you're adding stuff into your soil. Well, right. maybe you're adding too much nitrogen, or you don't have enough potassium. And that soil test will help you with that. And it maybe each year costs you $25. That's not a lot to learn how your soil is and it affects, you know, it's going to tell you your pH and it's going to tell you all the different minerals and things that you have in your soil. And I think it just helps you be more successful. And that's the whole point of it. You don't want to, because certain vegetables like higher pH, it likes lower pH. And so if you're wondering, well, I wasn't, this plant wouldn't grow. Well, maybe it needed something added and that soil test will help you. Now, when you make a raised bed, you get to control everything that goes in there. Right. And so, but even after, even with raised beds, after three or four years, I would still test your, um, 
your soil in those raised beds. Mm -hmm. Because when you're adding stuff and you're adding your own compost or leaves or whatever you're adding, it always is changing. It's evolving because it's becoming a living organism. And I think we just need to, um, you know, really enhance and help our soil because the better your soil is, the more vegetables you're going to get from, you know, and I, I just think that's something to do, but I would totally agree with you. Start small. You know, the seed packets are so enthralling that, oh my gosh, I want to try this one and I want to try this tomato and five different kinds of lettuce and, um, oh, and Angie's saying container gardening is an option too. And both of us do can container gardening too, because you can move those containers because as the sun moves different places in your yard, a container, you can just drag it, you know, later on in, in August, it may not be getting the sun that it got in May. And that is a nice thing to be able to do. Yes. And if you have a small area or you have a balcony, you can grow things in containers, you know, and you still get vegetables and that's important. Oh, and Michelle and Rob are here. Hello. <laughs> we like real life with Michelle and Rob. <laughs> hey, uh, if I can, which yes. I don't do a whole lot of gardening, but two big things helped us out this year uh, with what we've, how successful she was in the garden. <laughs> <clears throat> one, the raised beds, because mm -hmm. uh, we could control our soil better. And two, the addition of having honeybees. Oh, yeah. That made yeah. That's true. Yeah. And even if you don't have one, if somebody around you has honeybees, because they'll travel. And right. the difference in your vegetables, your fruits, is just amazing with honeybees. Because everything is getting pollinated instead of just half of it or three fourths of it. Right. You can plant things that attract them if you don't have them. Make right. For them. <laughs> yeah, because like certain habitats that I have in my yard are made to bring native bees in. Mm -hmm. Because a native, though I love regular honeybees because I love the honey, but a native bee can pollinate way better than. A honeybee right. and so put the little houses up have the plants that they like and there's just so many native bees in every part of the country yeah and don't use poisons that kill our bees <laughs> yes yeah um and really the stronger your soil gets the stronger your plants are and those plants will ward off a lot of those bad bugs mm -hmm. and sometimes you plant a plant that's just a sacrificial plant, right? You know, like if you have flea beetles, you might plant lots of radishes so that they go to that mm -hmm. instead of your other plants. Right. Yeah. And so it's just a learning process, which I just find fascinating every summer. <laughs> <laughs> <Me too. laughs> yeah, it's just amazing. So um, we better sign off. It's, one hour 33 minutes wow. so, doug i so appreciate that you did this with me yeah. tomorrow is our 24th wedding anniversary yes oh i didn't know that. you did know it. Thank you for the card that was so sweet anniversary present Ooh. i like playing it's an opal. yeah it's an opal heart opal for our 24th that's the the gift so nice. yeah he's very considerate with the things like that Doug, we love you <laughs> keep him <laughs> we got to figure out how we can get to arizona yeah, please do because there's an extra room at the the house that we're going to be at and you could stay with us <laughs> you know or maybe we can meet halfway in the middle yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. Or in the Dakotas. Yeah. Well, anytime you want to come to the Dakotas, you can stay with us in Wyoming and we'll take you to the Dakotas and show you all the fun spots. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me, Sandy. That was really sweet of you to well, invite me here. I thought it would be interesting, you know, because two different areas and some things are very similar. 
the, yeah. the way a gardener thinks. But there are things that you can grow better than I can. And opposite too, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. So everyone, thanks so much for staying so long. Oh, wait, somebody's coming up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Thought you were finished. <laughs> Joe's coming in. We want you to photobomb. <laughs> Just look right there. There he is. Hi, everyone. <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> he came well, up yeah, that's right. <laughs> 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 so thanks everybody for staying so long and we just really appreciate it and make sure you go over to healthy homestead chick and check shelly out and you will love her gardening videos and her getting in shape videos and all the things that she's cooking and she's making apple cider vinegar and just so many things so thanks bye everybody bye